I think this little mini session is really around doing stuff that I feel comfortable with doing and it might be the simplest of maneuvers and you know not the greatest of anything but based on the evaluation of things I have attempted to try different uh, ways of mobilizing my pieces based on the evaluation trying to make myself feel comfortable with those um, areas um, some of them I've not felt comfortable with at all because at the end of the day I don't end up in a position that I definitely would feel comfortable with especially like playing over the board or something like that so I have done a lot of practice with ooh, let's um, hit the night here a lot of practice with different types of maneuvers at the starting point and really it is about now knuckling down and focusing on the things that make you feel comfortable no matter what the opponent kind of responds or does and um, there are ways to make yourself myself feel comfortable with the position because I'm a position player and when I've done evaluation quite a lot of the times the evaluation suggests moves that really don't look like they give me a good position it's more like a material gain thing but my position looks rubbish and um, so yeah because I'm not a computer I can't make a material gain thing with a rubbish position work so I want to have a good position and have nice decent material but have good position um, it don't matter so much about the, the majority the, the quantity of uh, material because really at the end of the day our ethos is no matter how many pieces you've got on the board if they're not in the right places then the talent amount to being useless and I'll stick by that forever and a day so his knight's defending so we could take the knight I don't think the knight's going to take I think the pawn's going to take but we've still got the x-ray through so we don't need to waste any time over that we could go here but we get kind of fought could castle there's no immediate threats on our king but the queen can come here so we could develop the knight blocking that off let's just develop the knight blocking that off king is safe um, yeah if we had to look at the traits of the 1200s traits of the 1300s 1400s 1500s etc um, in those videos um, it's really quite clear you know that people aren't castling early they, they're out there fighting the good fight but the essence of what we were attempting to do here when we're talking about not castling too early is definitely making sure that your king is safe before you can actually go out and actually do any attacks on your opponent so it's as simple as that really um, in the traits basically it showed that yes they're out there not castling but their king definitely really isn't safe and majority of the time their king suffered because they hadn't put their king in a good virtual castle or kept it safe in some way shape or form so yeah definitely key to could go here now mash knight takes pawn yeah let's let's just take keep it simple now starting to get a little bit too out of here mistake to take that type of stuff let's just get the pieces off the board yeah so in the trait videos definitely clear that the castling aspect has to be a proper focus um, castling thing whether it's by hand or just the simple maneuvering of the king to make sure that it's safe get people get them um, pieces supporting let's capture this um, knight just dishevel that side for a little bit and there's nothing attacking but the queen can come an x-ray if it wanted to but we've got time to bring our bishop out we could bring it here nice diagonal towards here it's not really hitting anything per se could bring it as a blocker but there's nothing really going to be attacking this pawn at the moment and we're bringing it here it's being defensive I feel like bringing it here because it's um, attacking an open diagonal and then we can consider castling so hopefully you can see what I've done there our king is safe there's nothing that can really attack it so then we can go and castle once everything's safe unless there's another further attacking position that we can develop but all the while making hopefully making sure that our king is safe and it's not being challenged
so it's been good experiences we've had with um, the evaluation yeah okay so that's a nice little challenging thing doubling the pawns it wants to do I'm gonna just go on to a white square with the Queen and also support the Knight with any sort of potential aspects of having access to the open diagonals just like the bishops got access to the open diagonal it's a little bit like when we say rooks like open files well the bishops like open diagonals you know in order to be able to maneuver so those principles can be used quite freely i mean the thing for the knights is they like to have open spaces from both sides of the board as best possible and if they don't have access to it you may as well trade them down or sacrifice it for a better position the queens just like open files everywhere and the more pieces on those files that are unprotected the better for the queen But you have to be careful with the queen because it can easily be so trapped. So nothing's clear here. It's still even Stevens. Um, we have more pieces out in a sense, you know, on in the board. But there's no, no clear attacks anywhere. So it's pretty even still, really. I think they've got a castle now because they're trying to find something to maybe the, this smaller piece attacking a higher piece but then he's thinking well it's disheveling my castle by doing that might even develop the queen out now saying well okay if he's going to kingside castle let's put, maybe put some pressure put some pressure on the pawn get a little bit of an x-ray well that won't work because the pawn can take what else has he got support in the bishop Attacking the pawn. Again, that's not going to be too hefty, but behind there is the B pawn, so it's always for the B pawn. So it's either that or castling, that's what I think. Might want to make space for his, but that's going to lose him because he's thinking, well, I need to get my bishop out. How do I get my bishop out? So they've gone into a deep think and I don't want to do any more calculation type stuff so okay so they brought the bishop all the way back it's a, probably a slight loss in tempo in can we take advantage I don't think we're going queenside castling I mean we do have the option of going there it's just that he does have all this open open file which kind of doesn't make any sense to do that so with them bringing that back are they looking to attack the bishop this way you know attack towards this side here get the queen down or crowd around somehow is there anything that we can do to block that off or do we just castle king side because he, he did have that tempo to go on castle king side um, is it all about this space do we bring our queen here we bring the queen here, his bishop can attack. But we're attacking this pawn anyway, so we'd get that pawn. So that looks a little bit more active, doesn't it? His queen can come down and attack the B pawn. Yeah, and that's a bit of an annoying position as well, isn't it? Go here. Maybe he castle, so maybe he's going to castle, or maybe he just brings his bishop here. Then he's attacking this pawn with the bishop. Then we attack his bishop. His bishop takes, pawn takes. And then this pawn is going to be on the knight. Interesting. I believe it's this. I believe it's this. It's giving them something to think about. We're not rushing castling as yet, just seeing what's actually happening and occurring. So he has options of this, he has options of pushing the pawn, he has options of bringing the bishop here, or attacking the queen, just to say, well, go and take it then. I don't think that will happen though.
So the initiative, fighting for the initiative, this is what we're doing in this particular game. Uh, again, it's about utilizing all the experiences and the evaluations that I've done over the years. And I really have tried to put in quite a lot of the um, results of the evaluations, you know, from the computers and that sort of stuff and I put it into my game. I found, um, I found a few that I'm, I can't really still make comfortable as I mentioned in the previous video it's about it's about really feeling genuinely heart to heart comfortable with the position at the end of the um, movements that the computer has um, suggested and there's a few that I'm, I'm, I still struggle with and I can't make them work because I don't feel comfortable with it um, I have made them work you know um, look, don't get me wrong um, when I say I can't make them work, it's I, I don't believe in them. Yeah, so he's brought the bishop there, like we said, and now he's attacking the pawn. So the bishop can attack, and the option then is maybe the bishop does take, and then maybe the queen takes. That's probably better. It's just that this pawn is kind of isolated in the centre, but maybe it's not going to be there for long. But there's going to be a lot of challenges towards it. So I'm going to bring the bishop here attacking anyway because we had covered that in our one two step calculation I don't think, we, well it was a four step wasn't it but it all depends on what the opponent did so I, I would go with a two step calculation on that one And he's not forced to take, so I don't know what they're going to do. They could just go and castle and just wait for the bishop. If the bishop gets taken, then the queen comes here. So there's, they've got options. Just thinking if the if they castle, do we just go with the bishop attacking the rook? lose kind of a bit of tempo because really the rook's just going to come here and then it, the bishop's not doing anything then apart from coming here to defend the pawn or coming back and attacking the bishop what's causing me a bit of angst is the fact that well if the bishop does take then we take with this pawn or we take with the queen and my brain's kind of thinking well aren't these strong because they're linked and they're in the center of the board but from my experience, I don't believe they are because they don't tend to manage to get too far down the board. But I'm trying to placate my brain to believe that that is what actually happens in the previous games. It's not always a good structure, this here. It looks good because they've got three pawns in the centre. But if we've got pawns and we've got pieces that can manage, I don't think this structure usually ends up being too well. For the opponent they've got attack on the b pawn as well don't forget if the rook does go there we can take these things do happen you know they forget that they've got a piece under attack they might be under control well the pawn will take so i'll move the rook so they have actually taken with the bishop so we could take with the queen maybe the expectation is that this pawn is going to touch onto the queen which then makes it have to move kind of thing so if the queen then moved and put a check on the king it does have this pawn that can push down Think if we take with the pawn here that's where the pawn can start hustling our knight a little bit knight can jump here obviously looking for this magic square but is there any support i'm going to take with the queen like we said i mean having these pawns here in the past i don't think it's too strong in any way shape nothing to worry about We're also on this pawn here with the rook, which obviously will entice them to go and castle. 
So again, fighting for the initiative, giving them things to think about at each step. As far as I can see so far, that's what we've done. So every movement that we've made, especially developing towards this mid game. Oh, the rook's defending the pawn. So they're not castled, left the king in the center of the board. So they're very confident. So if this pawn wasn't here, we'd be able to just take this. But then again, we wouldn't because the queen would be able to take. So we could move the king just to the side, looking to double up. Or we could be proactive, start pushing this pawn here, start attacking this pawn because it can't take because of the x-ray through. But obviously if we do that, what's going to happen? This pawn is just going to drop here to stop any of that activity. So then we'll be looking to push this pawn up to try and hit this pawn. Small potatoes. So the knight's not doing much at the minute, so we could look to really get it involved in the in the game, couldn't we? So I think the knight movement coming here is not going to be good because the queen is going to come and put a check on. So we're going to end up having to jump back anyway. So should we castle now? Might as well castle now so that then we don't get that. And if we're allowed the opportunity to get the knight across, then we go that way. But I think things are going to start happening. We've got, well, not covered it off, but we're trying to develop a plan of sorts. I don't really like the rooks supporting the b-pawns and that type of thing but we shall see how it pans out okay so they have gone with that one and um, we did have the option of going here like we said and then the pawn pushing down and then after that we can don't really know where it's going to go after that but is there anything else while we're here so we could come here I'm just going to put the simple check on the king. Obviously that's coming down. What's it going to look like after that? Don't really want to jam my queen in here, but we could take this pawn off the board if they do that. But maybe they're just going to move the king out of the way. So a virtual castling situation. So in any event, because we've got the fork again, giving them something to think about fighting for the initiative, um doesn't mean a right i don't want to get my queen trapped it doesn't look like it will get trapped but it can happen you know so say well say he moves there then we take because he's protecting his rook then he brings his pawn down our queen in essence has got it's got all this space here i suppose doesn't have any space going across there so that's where the issue would be about the trapping thing yeah okay so that seems fine so fighting for that initiative again is a key thing for me developing my game I was always a bit of a in-your-face type of player which caused me a lot of problems because I was just throwing stuff out there attacking 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 and wasn't really looking at the back end. It felt good because I was playing chess. I felt like, yeah, I mean, I'm playing the game. Um, but then when you're doing such beautiful attacks, but then the opponent finds blind spots in your game, it feels like a bit of a waste of time and effort. So I think this way of doing the fighting for the initiative helps me to look at my defense as well as the attack and really i'm looking for comfortable position after it all i'm looking for comfortable position i don't really want to greedy munch if it's not going to improve my position because from out of all of the games i've played so he has gone there so we are going to take the pawn excuse me because he's protecting it with the king I don't think there's any trappy thing so it can come here as far down and then that would open up our queen coming here so i think we can take the pawn okay so they've sorted their plan out there now coming down for the pawn the b pawn as we said right from the start it's also got this pawn here as well in his sights so we could bring our queen all the way back 
to protect the knight and the pawn and if the queen does take then obviously the rook can attack so then we'll be pressuring the king the queen and winning that fight for the initiative as far as i can see it's going to bring the queen back and getting ready for the rook to come here for their greedy munch so this is the type of thing i'm talking about with position and it's again the way that i talk sounds like oh everything's sewn up no this is just oh he's going for it so we'll bring the rook here looking to pressure the king and then bring the rook here so the uh, queen is having to move so we're winning a moment in time each step so far it's not saying we're winning though because it's equal at this moment in time so the queen either goes here or goes all the way here or goes back here which is fine there's no problems allows us to double the rooks here rooks like those doubled files so the bishop is going to be under pressure to do something i don't think anything can support the queen is going to be here maybe they might get yeah they might wriggle out of it but i think tempo wise we're probably a move ahead of something queen comes here rook comes here yeah it needs to go there doesn't it to stop it okay it's not doing that so just double the rooks don't need to overthink that side of things maybe the king comes here now so that the bishop can oh he's gone there instead so we said the knight we wanted the knight to get into the game this might be the moment where we need to get this ex extracted because don't forget the queen has got this and they think they're being clever because this rook is going to come here yep let's get the knight up watch how quickly this rook comes here so this is the back end stuff that when I'd first started playing over the board games these are the types of things that I would miss because I would be tunnel visioned on Yes, get my knight here, get the knight there, and then all they do is a simple rook here. They've got pressure here, and then they're going for the check. It's not a checkmate, but it's giving them a bit of an initiative, which we don't want them to have. So they've eventually moved. They've moved the rook out of the way, um, rather than going for this. So we've got to keep that in our mental roller decks. It is currently simply def uh, defended by pushing the pawn or, or bringing the queen across and attacking their queen. So we were thinking of bringing the knight up, attacking the bishop and the rook. So they've obviously thought, well, not wearing them apples. We could still do it because the bishop doesn't have anywhere to go. And if that happens, then we could take and then the queen goes down if the queen takes the um, bishop then obviously we would get like the queen off the board i don't think that's going to happen that way i think what's going to happen is we go here then he brings his rook across so what's the tail of the tape going to look like then So fancy is going here, but then it's not good enough because at the end of the day, the queen can move, but... Oh, he could just take our rook. Then we take his. And then we lose the knight anyway, so there's no point doing that. And there is the other option of the rook coming here first attacking the bishop but again he can still come here but I think if we take the bishop with the rook with a check on his king he has to do something could just move his king out of the way no obviously queen takes Yeah, it's all a bit messy that really, isn't it? So I think the best move out of all of them is bringing the knight here. 
and then this rook isn't getting involved. Yep, that's what I think should happen. So I'm going to bring the knight across. And throughout the beginning part of all of this movement, when we said that we wanted the knight to basically go across, across here, to then sit here, it has ended up in the position that we had calculated ages ago. Once it got to this position, it did look quite tasty. If they had left it, then we could go here. So we would have changed the plan. But currently, it's sticking with the plan of the knight coming here. So that works for us. Um, it's not a, it's not a diversion or anything from the plan that we'd set out. It's just the pieces are in different positions now. So it's nice to look and reassess to see whether or not the plan has changed. I don't think it's going to have the same impact, but we'll see what the opponent does next. So they push the pawn. Doesn't want the knight being attacking here. Bishop still defending this pawn swing across now attack this pawn two on one with a check on the king but he doesn't need to leave the pawn there he can push down so that's where the question would be so if we took doesn't have yeah he needs to have to take with the pawn Queen can come here. Looking to support any knight check on the king situation. Interesting, but that's not going to be fast enough, is it? Because this pawn is going to hit this rook. So do we push this pawn to block this pawn first? And then look to come across here? I don't think any of this is going to be fast enough though, really. King's going to come and support the pawn as well. Mm. But if we've got the queen there before the king got there, then he can't come down and support the pawn. Interesting situation. Look, can come across and attack the queen. What do we go for? I don't think we're going to be fast enough either way. Blocking the pawn first. Do we really need to focus on that? Goes here, pushes down. Push the rook up, attacking. So I've got two on one. Queen comes down. It's got a diagonal towards a back ranker. Also stopping the rook from getting here. I mean, they might not think of these things, but these are f that's physical possibilities that what could happen and it could s spoil the whole. So if we went here first, gives them something to think about in terms of we're putting a two on one, but then the king comes there and it blocks it, blocks the queen from coming here. Does the queen need to go there? Actually, the queen could go up and then here, drops the pawn, attacking again. It's all a bit fancy, isn't it? Let's push the pawn to block. And if any of this stuff comes off, then we, we have a plan of type in order to try and get towards the King Gary. So that's it in a basic nutshell. Rook across, puts pressure here, King comes and supports. We assume Queen comes here. I don't really know what they're going to do. You know, they could do anything. I don't know. So it looks like he spotted what we're going to attempt to do already. So I'm bringing the queen up because we've already covered that off in our calculation.
but to bear in mind the opponent will be thinking of their own calculations so I never I don't really know what they're going to do I can only assume Okay, so they've made the move and uh, none of this was in our calculation. So their queen is in the center of the board. It's attacking this pawn here. Is that a major thing for us to worry about? I mean, we did plan to come here with a check on their king. Again, can the queen come and block? Not necessarily. I mean, he can move out of the way with the king. He can come here with the king can push the pawn down so there's options there so let's have a look at each of those options so if he goes back when we've gone here where are we going from there we're wanting to try and support our pawn no now it's looking nice but it's too slow rook putting pressure onto the bishop oh that'd be interesting wouldn't it that would be interesting actually. So we go here and see they go back. Then the rook comes up. So the rook now is no longer defending. And if he greedy much for the pawn, which I probably doubt it very much, we would just put a check on the king and get the bishop off the board. That's too simple. It's not going to happen like that. But it's an option so we go here and same thing again well maybe if he goes here that's different that's a horse of a different color so what would we do with that one do, 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 do. there's no oh god i thought i'd moved it there can't go here because his queen's there mm -mm -mm definitely that but then goes here in front of that square the rooks can't do anything knight can't get it well we could swing back up to go and get his rook give him something to think about so obviously he's going to move the rook isn't it or maybe not maybe he doesn't want to lose a pawn so they brings the king back to support can push this pawn to support the pawn it's the queen's by itself at the minute but Is it simple? Can we just do simple and just push the pawn and support? <laughs> um, I just feel like there's something that can be done. So come down. It depends where he goes. Let's just put the check on the king first and see what happens and do the calculation from there. I don't think we're in danger. Knee jerk reaction would be to push here. If we did go there, his rook comes down. Um, so he does win the tempo to get the pawn. So maybe we don't go shooting up. Yeah, so the pawn comes down. Oh, interesting. Pawn goes down, we go up, his rook comes down. We'll go for the bishop but then his rook goes no you're not having the bishop and blocks we have a diagonal here but the queen is protecting so we could get a draw going up and down yeah i think that's what they'll do actually go there is there anything else Swing all the way back, protecting the pawn.
Whew, at last, so he's made the move. So I'm going to do a bit of cat and mouse. Let's go here. So our queen's going to end up back down here. But somehow they're going to. Uh, we're giving up a pawn. Going to attack the bishop, like we said. Rook goes back up to defend. So we're sacrificing this pawn. We've had a long time to think about the calculation. I do believe it. It's a greedy munch thing for the for their queen, which is going to put them in a bad position. They believe that they're going to actually get the knight for free. But our position, hopefully, after this calculation um, pans out, um, our position will be fairly favourable for us. We've done many greedy munching um, videos. And so hopefully this stands us in good stead. They brought the queen back. Protecting the bishop. That's a horse of a different colour, isn't it? So can we continue with this movement here? It does still have the king protecting that square. Can we still come here with a two on one on the bishop? I think that looks a lot enticing, doesn't it? Is my, oh, my queen gets trapped though. Yeah, not trapped, but I have to move the queen. We go here attacking the bishop, then the rook comes here. So he's already got the queen on the rook at that moment, so it's not like we're going to lose the rooks. So we should be able to move the queen to attack here. Don't know if we'll have tempo to get the rook involved as well, because he may just push the pawn with an x-ray through onto our, but then the queen can take the bishop. Okay, I think that might work, you know. I'm surprised they brought the queen back. So the rook can come here. Yes. Um, might still protect it, might put it there, there. Yeah, that Okay, let's bring the rook up. Just a pile, so I'm trying to keep that initiative going we know what initiative they're going to get we know what we're still trying to fight for the initiative by putting some pressure onto this pawn again and maybe hope oh do you know what though we can't move this rook because it's supporting this rook so we need to change that story yeah we need to change that story rook's gonna have to come back probably <laughs> ah these things are sent to try us because the king and the bishop are the ones defending the pawn so even if we yeah so it does come down with that so is there something different now then obviously we can come here but then he's just going to dance put the check on oh hold on though what about coming here obviously we can't squeeze through there can we and attack the queen. No. So if we get the rook off the back, let's just put a check on the king. Then the rook's off the back. Go for a draw. No. Got to fight against the draw. Come on, we can do it. We can do it. I'm a bit miffed now because I can't move this rook to support and attack this pawn. So it seems like a little bit of nugatory work. Right, what can the knight do? Can the knight do something special? Sacrifice itself for the greater good. There's no checks on the king, you see, with the knight. 
Right, let's bring the queen here. Even though we can't do anything here, I'm gonna to have to find something else. Bring the rook back again. So we've still got the access there for the queen if something kicks off. So we'll put the owners back on the opponent to do something. Again, they're not going to do that, but if they did, the queen can take the bishop. They might block off first, go for something simple, or can the rook do, do something to upset the apple cart? Probably so. Let, let's have a look. One, two. As nice as my knight is here, it's not doing enough. It's nothing meaty. I mean, that's good, but I'm going to have to bring the rook back. That allows them to get a little bit settled and then put more pieces defending the pawn anyway. Okay, so they pushed the pawn down. Um, we did say some sort of activity was going to happen here. So I'm thinking, if we look to exchange the queen, again, they don't have to, they can just move out of the way, but then we'll take the, the bishop. So I'm thinking the queen is wanting to stay there, so it can't go here because the knight will take it and it can't go there. So I think it was if it moves it does lose the bishop so it's gonna it's not gonna want to take our queen but it can't do anything else but the rook i suppose can replicate but is the rook the best thing to be in that position because the knight can come here but then obviously the bishop can take so for coming here So I'm kind of half happy that they've pushed this pawn because while I was thinking, I was thinking, well, maybe he could just drop this, we could take, he takes, and then he's blocking that passageway. But if we attack their queen, and I don't think they're going to take, you know, attack their queen, or does he just simply drop on? He just drops on, doesn't he? Because I can't take the pawn, can I? Hmm, is there a squeeze up here? No, 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 no. There's a squeeze here, but it's still, still that two on one thingy. Then we can squeeze there, maybe. Yeah, well, that's annoying, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it was only the other way that he'd be able to block, but he could just drop here like that. And that's... Drops there. I suppose we can go up, looking to come across and attack that way. I think either way, I think we're trying to get to this square to see if we can get their queen off the board. If they don't take... Just feels like it's going to be better if I don't take get to the end of there. Yeah, huh? Well, if they don't take, we'll just take anyway. So let's go with it. It may take because it's doubling our pawns, but at least it gets it out of the way here. And I think we're trying to sort of corral some business towards this king area with the remaining pieces. Well, that's weird, the king's come down. 
looking to block the square that we're wanting to go to but we can take but he's also got support with the rug on this square I think this is all veiled attempts to get these rooks towards here. Hmm. Come down to attack the king. Again, just jumps here. Um, well, my brain is in stuck mode at the moment. Stuck, 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 stuck. What if we go up? Bring this rook here this is so long though i mean he can just come here and defend can't he it's just too long oh do you oh no we can't. <laughs> i was just gonna say why can't we bring that one across here when we bring this here obviously the rook will just take i bet you i am missing one massive juicy move rook takes. I think we're, I don't know I don't know I think that we're gonna be making a rod for our backs here push up seems to be the only thing to do unless of course we go here and push this pawn onto this pawn doesn't have to take we take It's something different to the situation on the board. That's a bit too risky, I think. This might have something to it. If he does take, then we can take back. Isolates his pawn. Isolates our own pawn as well. He can actually attack our pawn. But something's telling me it looks a, feels a little bit better. Maybe his king's coming over to protect his bishop. So his rooks can get in the game. This is one long recording. Oh, at last he's given up the bishop. So there must be a reason. Maybe they're scared of this here. But I think we need to take the bishop off the board. Because that, that's... It, it's too strong if it starts getting out there although at this moment in time i mean it is fairly weak because all the pawns are on white squares so it is kind of a bad bishop so i feel like i'd be getting rid of a good knight for a bad bishop the rook is defending this square at the moment i am looking to take it off the board with the knight don't don't get me wrong but let's see if there's anything different transpired could bring the rook across here obviously the king's not going to want to wear them apples 
going to come and defend. Yeah, okay, so if we did take the bad bishop off with our good knight, the rook obviously takes. Take, rook takes, rook attacks the pawn, rook comes back and defends, push the pawn. Don't think they'll take, so it's going to end up being locked down. That's as simple as I can get it. I don't think there's any point in getting fancy. This player is um, really strong. So taking the bishop, come down, attack the pawn. Or could we go this way? Then we'll get the rooks off the board. Yeah, so if he goes there, if we attack, excuse me, if we attack the pawn, one of the rooks is coming across, probably this one, to defend. We take, his rook takes. We come here now to own the file as best possible. Does he dare push the pawn? Ooh, interesting times. Because if we push, then he can take, and if we take, he comes down, puts a check on our king. Hmm, so it might not be a fight for, whoa, 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 what's the deal? For ownership, let's see, go here. doesn't have to bring the rook back, he could always look to just come here and come down, couldn't he? If we go there, we say he's pro probably maybe going to do that. Uh, if we take, then he takes, then we hit the pawn first. He doesn't have to wear them apples. And he could push his own pawn. We take though, he can't take, but then he can push his pawn past. I'm not sure I'm liking that situation, you know. There. You can always come here and then attack the pawn. See, defense. We take, he takes. We want to be trying to fight for the initiative. He doesn't have to do that and he goes there. So then if we take this pawn, if he takes then we get his rook for free, that's the story. Dun, dun, dun. Push. Not sure, you know, I'm not sure. Okay, so like we said, just take here. So they're following the line, and I'm going to push the pawn, like we said, and see what happens from here. So you can't even say that we're going to try and, win, try and win on time here. It's a 15, 15 second increment, so it's not about any time factor here. Yes, they are on 4 minutes and 54, but that doesn't make any difference in this sort of game. Because you can rack that up dead quickly. So the essence is, is, is he going to come here and negate this and attack this pawn? He's doing the exact move that we said so far, so I'm going to take the pawn. If he rushes and takes, then we get the rook for free with a check on the king. 
but it's not doing that so I was thinking of bringing the rook here and then we're attacking two pawns so that's what we've worked out up to that point it doesn't mean anything for sick oh it's actually taken but it, he does have a passer himself and his king is closer to the pawn as well so I'm gonna to have to try and move fast but I don't think I'm gonna be fast enough Wow, the tricks of the trade. I could have actually pushed here, but oh, never mind. I'm, hope, I'm hoping they lost tempo because I thought they were going to push this pawn here to make space for their king to come and get our pawn. I think that probably would have worked for them because our king wouldn't have been able to get their pawn and their king would have been corralling their pawn down. Yeah, so if they'd have pushed this pot and my king couldn't come up to get it, I'd have to come across. Then his king could have come here. Then I would come up to get his pawn. So if he took our pawn, I wouldn't be able to take his pawn and he could win a tempo, could he not? No, he's going to have to move his king, so maybe his king just moves behind. So I feel like I would be getting zugzwanged of some sort. I might look at the analysis on that one. This is an extremely long game, so yeah, where are we at? So he's moved his king across and he still might have it. It's just that this rhinoceros head is blocking this access. So in a way it's a zugzwang because he can't go here. So he's going to have to go back or back. So he loses the pawn. So our king's going to have a bit of play either choosing these pawns to take or maybe finessing this pawn up. Yeah, I think that smallest of movements there with the pawn, that w I think that would have sealed my fate. And they've resigned. Wow. Okay, let's look at the analysis um, just on that bit, that last bit. Not, uh, not the whole game because that took too long. And let's see where we're at to the tip. Yeah, this is the point. This is the point right here. Okay, so yeah, we're losing minus 7.6, 7.4. Then the king moves down. Oh, is it, what's it saying? D4. So it's saying move the pawn before any of that. Yeah. I felt that we were out of time, out of tempo massively so then they brought it here so then again me moving my king h3 yeah i told myself off the test i said i should have just pushed this here you know attacking this area making space yeah i did kick myself at that point so yeah those crucial points um are the ones where look i'm dead meat here yeah because he could have just pushed the pawn down so at that point in time then we kind of gained the advantage.